Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Masaki from State 483 and today we're going to be talking about Reservoir Raid and a general guide on how to succeed in this event. So before we start Reservoir Raid, the first requirement for the event obviously is to make sure that your troops are home. That means gather, etc, recall them and make sure that they're all healed. Um, you also want to make sure that um, you have certain buffs enabled for the event. Now, as a basic level, I would just recommend enabling Massive March and also starting your radar jammer. Now, if you're gonna be more intense about the event or whatever, you might wanna also en enable your war talents um, from your talent tree, and also uh, turn on the troop buffs, such as attack, defense, march, health, etc. Those kind of buffs are gonna be useful for the event as well. Lastly, because Reservoir Raid is a team-based uh, event, you do wanna make sure you're walking in with some sort of strategy. That means that you should beforehand talk to your team and figure out some strategy options you have for what you're, for the opponents you're facing. If you don't know what specifically you're looking for, uh, we're going to be covering some basic strategy a little bit lo later in this video. But with that said, let's jump into the basics. Okay, on to the basics of the event. There are two point totals you have to keep track of. Alliance Team Water and Solo Water. Now, for Alliance Team Water, that's what the number you see at the top of the screen with blue representing your team and rep red representing the opponent team. You gain this point by occupying buildings and gathering around the map. That is the way to win this uh, reservoir raid as well. So you do wanna make sure that that number is higher than your opponent. In addition to that, there's something called solo water. And what this is, uh, is it tracks what reward tier you get for yourself personally. Now the rewards for hitting a higher tier of solo water is actually very great, so you don't want to be missing out on that. To gain solo water, you're going to be attacking and killing troops for, from your opponent. That's how you gain solo water. Don't forget that you cannot win the battle by just gaining solo water. You must have team water to actually win the fight. So you could, for example, hop around the map, kill all the en enemies you want, uh, without occupying any building and you'll actually lose Reservoir Raid. The main reward for Reservoir Raid is going to be the Reservoir Raid coins which you can use at the Reservoir Raid shop. Now what you usually buy with these coins are going to be your chief gear components as well as maybe hero fragments. The other rewards are not as worth it in my opinion so I would usually skip them for this event. All right, next, so let's talk about the buildings. So first up, we have water treatment plants. There are two of these on the map, one on your side and one on the opponent's sides. Um, these are really great for gaining water really early in the game. So you do wanna capture yours and potentially your opponents as well if you can. Next up is the helipad. Basically, this building reduces the cooldown of the free relocator you get inside RR by half. So it starts with six, 12 minutes if you own the helipad it will reduce it for your entire team to six minutes. Next up after that is going to be the solar plant. Basically the solar plant reduces the building control timer. Whenever you control, like to gain control of a building, you do have to occupy it and then hold it for a certain amount of time. The solar power plant station allows you to basically half that amount of time to control the building. So if there's a lot of battling going on in your RR, it is good to hold solar because it does let you flip the building faster, which allows you to start gaining team water faster as well. In addition to that, we have the uh, water processing plants. These are kind of, if you think about it, they're smaller versions of the water treatment plants. Um, they're just gonna give you half as much water. They're also very abundant. There are four of them across the map. So um, again, capture these when you can. Next is the Munition Compound. This building gives a buff to your team's troops, which is 15% attack and also 15% damage reduction. So that's very, very good. Uh, in addition to the Munition Compound, there's another building on the center. It's called Dev Compound. This one, if you hold it, allows you to send infected over to certain buildings to attack it. These buildings, along with the center, open after 15 minutes of the map. So they're not available at the beginning. Last up is the center. This building is very important for gaining a ton of Alliance water. 
Holding this building in the center basically gives you about three processing plant worth of water or one and a half water treatment plant worth of water. So yeah, it's quite a bit of water. Um, pretty important building in general to hold if you wanna win the reservoir raid. However, there are some strategies where you don't have to hold center and you can still win. And I'll share some of those when we get to the strategy section. The last building to talk about are the water tanks. These become available 25 minutes into the map. They're gonna be randomly spawned across the map they don't need a team to gather. Um, in fact, there's a strategy where you would send only one troop and they, they would gather at the full speed of 240 water per minute. These are great buildings to hold if you wish to win the reservoir raid. In addition, um, they're great for solo players to be able to send some troops over there without their team present. With that, that's all the buildings. Let's hop over to strategy. My go-to strategy for most RRs where we feel like we're going to win is to hold the two water treatment plants, the munition center, uh, the center water reservoir, as well as gather water across the map. This is a good strategy if you feel like you can overpower your opponents and just hold the most important buildings. Make sure when you're holding water, water treatment plants, you're also holding the corresponding water processing plants. And with this strategy, because you're not really going to be moving around a lot, nor are you going to be flipping buildings, you shouldn't be losing them. Um, you don't really need solar or helipad. This strategy is easy to coordinate and execute, and really all you need is a team that's responsible for water treatment plant one, one for the enemy's water treatment plant, and then one for center. The second strategy I will employ if I feel like the enemy is going to overpower my team is a type of guerrilla tactic, which I call everything but center. The goal of this strategy is that you're going to be sending out smaller teams across the map to kind of knock down bigger buildings, but your goal is not to hold center. Um, in fact, you will be challenging center, but your goal is not to hold center. You should give them a challenge so that they have to, the enemy team has to deploy a good chunk of troops or settlements into center and defend it. Now, your goal is to get, uh, grab all the buildings across the map, and what you'll realize is that if you can grab all the buildings, or a majority of them, you're actually going to be in a much better state of defending uh, and gaining enough water to win the event. This strategy is a little bit harder to pull off, as it requires quite a bit of um, coordination with your team, but with the right amount of troops, with maybe some pre-planning, uh, and the, route, the right rally leaders, you can actually hold certain buildings across the map as the team has to divide their resources across every single building across the map. This strategy is great if you do not expect that you can win against a frontal assault against your enemy um, as it keeps your enemy on their toes and then they have to watch all the buildings across the map. The third strategy I often use is called splitting the map. This strategy is great if you feel like you're equally matched against your opponent. The key here is that you want to be able to focus on holding down solar over helipad. And you're looking to uh, use this strategy because you won't be able to hold down both water treatment plants. Now, in this strategy, for the strategy to work, you do want to also constantly scout and make sure you see, if you see some weakness in your opponent's defense, make sure you attack those defense points. Um, as well as make sure that you're not forgetting about gathering. So assign a specific team to go and do gathering when gathering pops up. Because you're going to be evenly matched, you really have to edge out a, any specific advantage you can to edge the victory. Last strategy I'll cover is called victory by attrition. Um, I will use this strategy if we're just having fun with RR or if we feel like we're going to lose or if we greatly overpower our opponents. What this strategy basically is, when the map starts, hold very little buildings, those don't really matter, but make sure you jump on enemy settlements with very little troops as fast as possible, and just continuously wipe out their troops. And the idea here is that basically, you are trying to make sure that the, all of their troops are destroyed, that they have no power to face you for the rest of the reservoir raid, and then you're able to take over all the buildings that you want. So. Yeah, um, this, this strategy does require a lot of relocators, um, and it's good for like smaller alliances, especially if you get those matchups where 
you have higher plasma tier troops, but less people. So for example, think of a 10 versus 20, where you're matched up against a, uh, a lesser alliance with more people. This strategy also has the added benefit to ensure that everybody gets their highest amount of solo water possible because your focus is actually killing troops and not holding down buildings. Uh, most people in your alliance should be able to hit their minimums for their reward tiers. Okay, so now that we know the basics and some strategy, let's move on to some tips for the event. The first thing is you do want to reinforce your friends for RR. This is a great way to earn solo water. It also prevents a lot of troop uh, going to the hospital, which makes your healing time much faster. On the offensive side, if you cannot beat somebody, make sure you're rallying with your team and don't just send all your troops against a wall because that's the easiest way to basically take yourself out of R if you can't heal fast enough. Next is to go into the map with some plan for the event. R is a very confusing and chaotic event and having some sort of plan ahead of time will ensure an easier path to victory. A tip for gathering water spread across the map is to simply send one troop. What I will often do is send one troop to the gatherer and if somebody starts marching against me then I recall my troop and I will send a full march against their march after I understand who's attacking me. Um, this is just an easy way so you can have most of your troops still at home for defense or sending it to buildings to actually defend against um, your opponents. Don't go around losing your troops too early in the fight. Um, that will severely set you back for majority of the event and you won't really enjoy it. So a couple ways to not lose troops. Make sure if somebody's marching against your base, you're sending your troops out. Uh, one way is you can send them, on, of course, on the floor. Just occupy some empty land. Another way is to reinforce some of your higher level players or send them onto buildings. All of this is viable strategy for someone who's just trying to attack your settlement. On that note, it is totally fine to throw away troops towards the end of the fight. As you know, it will be the end of the fight. Um, it's a great way to gain some solo water, make sure you're hitting your uh, specific tiers for rewards, and that's a good way to do it. Another tip is to use the battle map or the tactical map. Uh, this match map actually gives you a ton of information. For example, you see the logos where it has kind of like a shield icon and a uh, red symbol. This actually tells you how many armies are garrisoned at each specific building. So that kind of gives you an idea if some building is weaker than others. For the arrows that are pointing towards the building, that shows you how many marches uh, or rallies are going towards that building. There, of course, also the water tanks are shown on the map that's easily accessible. You can also see the people icon on the map, which shows you where your friends or allies are. So it kind of gives you an idea of where people are, where they're gathered, uh, where they need help. Additionally, you can click on any building to zoom in and directly jump to that location. So that's also very helpful too. So in general, um, tactical map is a great resource and don't ever forget to use it for the battle. Another tip is to rem remember that you have free cooldowns in this event. You won't lose any troops, so feel free to use all your troops as much as you want. Um, as far as hospitals go, remember that you're gonna be able to get free um, heal speed ups from the hospital. So these do regenerate every so often. So you wanna use these as much as possible. In addition to that, you do have also march speed ups as well, which are great for speeding up marches to a building um, and or getting your troops back home. Lastly, you do have a relocator, which you can use once it's off cooldown. This one is free. You can of course use your own personal relocator, but um, just remember that you do have some free ones. And on the same topic of speed ups for healing, um, RR is the event that you should be using your speed ups for healing. Don't worry about saving them. Um, this is a good event to use it. It's actually one of the few events that you really kind of need it because there's no way to get tap help from your team. So you can't do bash healing, those other strategies that you might be pretty comfortable using in other events. One final tip I can give is um, don't spend your time jumping around the map too much. Um, it's actually very beneficial if you find a good spot and just sit there. A couple things you can do, of course, is sit at center, um, sit next to one of the water treatment plants, or set, sit next to whichever building you're supposed to cover. One thing I will do is I will position myself between the building I'm covering and also the water processing plant near that. 
um, around the center. What this will do is allow you access to, of course, the two buildings with ease. Um, kind of also puts you a little bit out of harm's way because it makes it forces the enemy to port uh, next to you, which is not an ideal place for them. And lastly, when the water ga uh, tanks are summoned, they are pretty close to where you are as well. So you're going to have first access. That is just a really great easy way to do it because it kind of allows you to access a lot of things without having to move around too much. Moving around actually loses you more points simply because as you move, you're going to be recalling all of your troops within reinforcements, within settlements, within buildings, within gatherers. So it's a great way to kind of evacuate your troops quickly. But on the flip side, you have to you will have to send out your troops to um, occupy buildings again, which will kind of lose points for you in the long run. And on that note, that's the end of the video. Uh, Reservoir Raid is one of the most fun event you're going to find in the game. It's one that if you really enjoy teamwork um, or attacking bases, the PvP elements of the game, you're really going to enjoy this event. Now, some of the items that we've talked about in this video are going to be very overwhelming. That's totally understandable. So I would encourage everybody to just play the event. And the more you play, I think you're going to find out that a lot of the tips I'm giving you are going to be a lot more clear as you play. So that's it. Um, that's everything I can share with you. This is Masaki from State 483 reminding everybody, stay classy.